Hello, and welcome back to our Let's Play of Romance of the Three Kingdoms 11. This is part three with me, your host, Metal Hunter. So in the last video there, we started to boost our economy by building markets, and our barracks just finished. So what we're going to do to start off now is start recruiting troops, because we're going to come under fire, and we also want to start taking Yuan Shu out pretty quickly here. I believe I'm going to start with him, and then maybe stop advancing north there and start concentrating on the area south of the river here and take out these three smaller rulers just to get a little bit of a power base away from other people where it can't be attacked. And I also want to try and take Chai San across the river fairly early just so it gives me a little bit of reach because I definitely want to crush uh, Hen Shuan over here in Changsa. He has two officers who are typically associated with the Kingdom of Wu, or pardon me, Kingdom of Shu, but they aren't there in the Rise of Heroes scenario. They're with the guy that they were with before they were recruited by Liu Bei. And those officers here are Wei Yan and Huang Zhong. Wei Yan is a really good general. Chain attack. He's got an S uh, aptitude in pikes with a really good war skill and good leadership. So he's good to have. But uh, the officer I'm really after down here is Huang Zhong with a 95 war, 90 leadership and the Divine Bow skill, which means if he uses a bow tactic and it succeeds, it automatically crits. And he's got a, a really good aptitude for bows and pikes as well. This general is just amazing. So we want to try and get down there before that force gets wiped out and his officers get recruited or go into the officer pool as free officers and get snagged up by someone else. So we're going to go ahead and recruit some officers, or not officers, pardon me, troops. So the three default officers that were picked here are normally the guy, highest guys for Charisma, but it's gone and defaulted to Chung Pu down here, even though he's only got an 85, because he has the fame skill, which allows him to recruit uh, considerably more troops. Normally, I think we'd be getting somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,000, 2,500 troops, but because he has fame, we're going to be getting over 3,000 plus here. So we're going to go ahead. Yeah, we had 3,930 troops for one recruiting there. And your gold cost doesn't change based on the amount that you hire. So we're kind of squeezing even more out of our money by doing it that way. So we've gone ahead and recruited. Every time you recruit, the order of the city goes down. We went from 100 to 90. So we're going to bring that back up here. I like to take care of that right away because even in the 70s, you can start getting bandits. So we'll go ahead and improve the order. And then I think we're just going to pass the turn here because we don't have any action points to drill the troops. So we'll go ahead and pass. Alright, so we finished the smith and another market. So we've got one more market to fill out all of our spots that will be affected by mints. And the smith will mean that we can now start building equipment for our troops. So I'm just going to look at what we have to start off with. So we have 5,000 spears, 5,000 crossbows, and 5,000 pikes, which suits me fine. I'm not worried about uh, horses too much right now since the terrain around here is a lot of uh, sand and forest and swamp up here if we want to push the attack to Yuan Shu. And those are not good terrain types for cavalry. You can't use their tactics a whole lot. So I'm just fine without that right now. So we'll go ahead and recruit again. And then we will inspect the city. And then we're going to actually outfit. And we're going to make uh, some bows here. We've got some pretty good bow generals. So we're going to make some crossbows. It costs quite a bit to do this. It costs 700 gold. And uh, our stock is going to go from 5,000 to 7,750, which is pretty good. Um, one skill that's really useful to save money is efficacy. We don't have any generals with that. They add a huge number. I think it's almost double. You get 5,000 crossbows instead of the 25 or 22 20, I guess 27, or yeah, 2750 that we're going to get here, so. Alright, so we've got crossbows, and again, we've exhausted our uh, action points. As you get further on, you'll get more. It's not as much of a handicap later in the game. Um, it's just early on here, it feels like we are running out because we've had to spend so much developing these. But we're going to make one quick check here. Yeah, and no one needs rewarding still, so that's good. So we'll recruit again, inspect, 
And let's see if we can fill out, yeah, we'll fill out that last market here while we can, because it's only going to take these guys 20 days to do that. So when the clouds go over like that, that uh, shows the beginning of a new season. We're in the fourth month here. So a new season has started. So we just collected our food, 5,205 food. And uh, as well, at the start of the season also denotes the start of a new month. So we also collected gold income again. Now, Jiling is on the move here. I don't know what he's doing exactly, but Yuan Shu has uh, ordered troops out of the city. We're not sure what he's doing. Maybe he's going to build some sort of... Yeah, he's carrying 2,000 gold, so he's probably going to build an archer turret somewhere in here, which is okay by me if he wants to be wasting his time doing that. All right, so we're going to recruit again. Inspect the city, and then we're going to outfit again. Let's make some spears this time. And down to 10. So now that the markets are done, I'm going to use the guys that were normally developing those and make a workshop so that we can start making siege weapons. Early in the game, they're really good. I don't like wasting a lot of troops attacking enemy cities because you get return fire from the troops inside. Uh, it's You're short on troops at the beginning of the game, so I don't like to be throwing them at the walls like that. So go ahead and make a workshop. Put that down here. Let's uh, recruit some troops again. Inspect. And... Uh, Next turn we can start outfitting again and then start drilling the troops. I usually leave that till after. I like to keep on top of the uh, order of the city as I go and then worry about just drilling the troops all in one go uh, and, and worry about that after. Doesn't look like much is going on down here. These guys don't have very many officers to really start expanding quickly. So yeah, Jiling has started building an archer turret here. I believe that's what that is. Yeah, Archer Turret. Okay. So let's recruit once again. Let's uh, make some pikes here. So we're spending our action points faster than we're making them, but uh, we should be getting close to enough troops to actually start assaulting a city pretty quick here. Once the workshop's finished, we'll build a siege tower and start moving on it. Okay, so we're going to start drilling the troops. Because I think we have enough. 43,000 ought to be enough. Even though that's even with uh, what Yuan Shu has, he only really has a few good generals. So we're going we're gonna to beat them in the field, no problem. So, let's drill some troops, and let's see, I'm not worried about a shipyard just yet, a lot of our officers have an S aptitude in uh, Navy, which is hard to come by normally, but because we're the Kingdom of Wu, we just have an overabundance of officers that are really good at naval warfare, and in boat-on-boat -boat combat, that is really the, the name of the game, is having the S aptitude. Um, we really don't need ships to be besting guys that aren't in ships themselves. So we're not going to worry about a shipyard right now. So let's go ahead. Um, I guess we'll do a stable just for now, even though I don't plan on uh, using it to recruit horses right away. But uh, it, it is a good unit type to have, especially once we start pushing up to the central plains a little bit and uh, fighting in and around here and stuff. All right, so we've got 21 action points. Let's see. No one needs rewarding still, so let's search. So Liu Kang has found Song Qian, who's uh, an average officer. He's someone who I'd leave in a, a back end of the city somewhere. So we're not, we're gonna try and debate, but we're not gonna watch that. And he succeeded in, in recruiting him there, so that's perfect. And we have exactly one action point, so we're just gonna end the turn. All right, so our workshop's finished. We can start working on siege weapons. I think it's going to take 30 to 40 days to create one of those. Uh, let's have a look real quick here. So we go to the outfit. Towers and rams, 15 or 1,600. 30 days, so three turns. That's not too bad. 
Okay, so I'm going to make towers at the beginning. Rams attack the city directly and attack the hit point value of a city, and towers attack the troops inside at a much efficient, much more efficient rate than your own troops will for the most part. And at the beginning of the game, you're going to deplete the troops inside the city quicker than you're going to deplete the city's hit points. So the tower is the way I like to go, at least until we've unlocked the Juggernaut technology. Juggernauts are really good uh, siege units. They're somewhat like a ram, but they use fire attacks and can also be used on enemy units, whereas rams can't even touch enemy units, just structures. So we're going to go ahead and develop a tower. It's going to cost us 1,600 of our 3,500 gold, though. All right, so, and we, we're going to outfit one more time here. And I think I want to do, I think I'm going to go with spears. I really like spears. They're a good all-around unit, so we'll do that. And uh, what I'm going to do, I have enough points, I believe, to move someone. No, not quite. Um, the ports and gates in the game will generate food and gold on their own, even though they don't have technically development squares. As long as you control the city that they're associated with, they will create their own supply of that. So what I'm going to do when I get some action points is send a general here so that he can transport the 1916 gold back to the city, because it's not doing us any good here. So uh, a lot of times it's good to have one crappy officer just sitting in these transporting to your city just to, to give you a better income. Um, as well as, you know, you don't want to be leaving some of these open. If they haven't been claimed for any reason, you want to take them. So we're probably not going to be attacking this port that Yuan Shu owns, because once we destroy his force, the, the troops that he owns in here will desert and it'll go to zero. But we're going to make sure to take that. We don't want to be giving that up on income. So we're going to go ahead and advance here. Okay, so personnel, we're going to move, we're going to move, yeah, sorry, Wenko is the only place. So we're going to use someone who's not very good, like this Song Qian that I just talked about. He has pretty much nothing good for stats. He's got an okay war, but I wouldn't put him in command of the unit on his own. And he's got no skill to speak of, so we're going to send him. It's going to take him 10 days to get there. And then we're going to drill our troops in the meantime. We're getting close to the cap of 100. Uh, you can get your willpower maximum up to 120 after you've researched some tech, but for now, 100 is going to be our, our top end, so we go that, and then we're going to bank these other 35 uh, action points and pass the turn. Alright, so our stable's finished. Alright, what's Ji Ling doing? He's still got plenty of gold left. I wonder if he is going to build an archer turret somewhere up here, or... I'm not sure. So let's drill one more time. And we have our officer here. So we're going to have him transport. We're going to transport just minimal food, just so he doesn't starve on the road. Sometimes uh, I forget to move the slider, because they start off with one food. And if they don't make it to their destination in one move, then they just die off in the field because the one guy with them starves. So we're just going to do that. We're going to grab most of the gold and leave a little bit there because you have to leave a little bit of gold because this officer has now been stationed here. So for a little bit, he's going to be receiving his gold from the port. We're going to just move all 2,000 crossbows for now. And we're going to go to that. And we're going to move them. And we're going to have him remain in Lujan for now. There's no sense leaving him over in Co. And so now we're sitting on 5,860 gold. And we actually have a decent amount of food still, but we're going to start really getting gold income like crazy here because we've got Lusu in the city, and uh, he's going to be boosting our income by 50%. So um, I think we can actually outfit one more time here. Let's just go ahead and build some pikes. And we've got a good number of armaments built up. So as soon as the siege towers are done, I think I want to march. Uh, let's see here. Own officers. So we've got one more turn before the... Uh, siege towers are finished. So that'll be next turn. Yeah, siege tower plus one. And we are ready to roll. And it looks like exactly at that time we're being attacked by Yuan Shu. 
The enemy has been spotted. It looks like they're aiming for Liu Jiang. Perfect. It's almost like he read my mind. So we're going to save the game here. As I said, the game can be fairly unstable. Sometimes it crashes at inopportune times. So, so let's have a look at what he sent out at us. Uh, Chao Rui, he's the only one in the unit it looks like. He's got no skill to speak of. Let's just have a look here. His aptitude is not very good. He's, what kind of unit is he? Sorry, he's a spear unit. And he's only got an A aptitude, which isn't terrible. Uh, aptitude determines how good you are with the particular equipment you're carrying. Uh, the scale is S, A, B, and then C. If you have an S aptitude, you have access to all three tactics associated with that equipment type. A, as you can see here, his highest tactic uh, assault is grayed out and he can only use rush and thrust. If he had a B, he could only use thrust. And if he had a C aptitude, he couldn't even use tactics associated with the unit. So this guy is not very good. He's got an attack of 58 and a defense of 54 on this unit because he himself has some pretty middling abilities, a leadership of 64 and a war ability of 69. So he's not going to be anything to worry about. And Yan Xiang is carrying bows. He's got an aptitude of C. His skill of efficacy doesn't help him in the field, but if I get the opportunity to capture him, I will definitely be capturing him because efficacy is that skill I was telling you about before. Uh, it allows us to really start cranking out equipment. So instead of doing, say, 2750 in one shot, we'll be getting over 5,000 equipment for the same gold investment. So I'm definitely uh, keen on getting him. So we've got bows and spears. And Ji Ling might try and join the fray too, so he's a spear general with pikes right now, so he won't even be critting us that much, so we're not too worried about that. So let's go ahead and meet them in the field. Oh, I think, uh, unfortunately, because we added one troop from Wang Ko to Lu Jiang, it averaged it out and the one troop brought our willpower down from 100 to 99 so but that difference is quite large in that all the tactics require a round number so even just going down one means we're only going to be able to use four tactics instead of say five tactics even though that's only one point so we're actually going to drill before we go but because we're only worried about one point we're not going to use any of our good stuff we're going to use Sun Hao he's got a 28 but he's going to be more than enough to get our willpower back up to 100 we're going to march so we're going to send out a spear unit. Uh, let's see who we've got for spears. So we've got five officers that have an S aptitude in spears. Um, I do want to send, let's see. Oh, we don't have a spear general. I'm thinking of a pipe general. So Sunjian and spears, Sunsa and spears. Let's go Sunsa as a valiant general. And I'm going to be putting three guys into each unit here. Normally it's not necessary. But I want to start getting deeds for my officers. Deeds are like sort of an experience system that allows you to award them ranks later on. And they'll get these deeds by being in the field defeating units. And each officer in the unit gets deeds for destroying other ones. So I want to be loading these up, even if they're not completely necessary at the beginning here. So we've got Sun Tzu. I kind of want to put a high intel officer in there with him. So let's send out, say, Juga Ke. Um, and let's send out, um, let's send Sun Chuan as well here. Let's send the two brothers here and they're going to be spears. I think 200 days is probably going to be fine for the amount of food that we need. And then we're going to march up here. Uh, what's going to happen is we're probably going to fight in this narrow strip of land here. Um, this is road... This is Earth. So at least our spears should be able to work here. Spears can't use tactics in sand. So as long as we meet them in the middle here, our spear tactics will be all right. So then we're going to make a bow unit. Uh, for bows, I definitely want to be sending Zhou Yu for a few reasons. Uh, he has the Divine Fire skill, which means he will be doing double damage with uh, attacks that use fire. The basic bow tactic is Incinerate which is a ranged attack that also lights the enemy on fire. So we're going to be taking advantage of that. As well, Zhou Yu happens to be the sworn brother of Sun Tzu. And when you've got sworn brothers on the field commanding units different from each other, if they're in range of each other when they make attacks, there's a good chance that they'll help each other out and get a free attack in on the enemy. So we want to send Zhou Yu and let's send him with, uh, send him with say, Zhou Tai, who is a 91 uh, for his war ability. He'll kind of protect the unit. And uh, his Divine Water skill won't help here at all. 
And then we'll just send Chen Wu uh, just as a, a filler here. So we'll send them out. And then let's send out a Pike unit. All right, so for Pikes, we have uh, a Pike general here, Ling Tong, with uh, 90 war, meaning that if he runs into Yan Shang's unit or Xiao Rui's unit, he will automatically crit them. He won't crit on Ji Ling uh, automatically because Ji Ling has a 94 war, I believe. But he's a, a good guy to be leading a unit. So let's send him out and let's uh, let's put him, say, with Gan Ning, just because we want to be getting deeds for all of our guys. And Gan Ning has a sweet skill in Majesty. And then we want uh, a good intel for this. So we'll send out Lu Xun as well, who's got uh, chain reaction skill, but that won't matter. Um... Actually, this is a little bit of an error. Lu Xun has enough deeds that he'll actually command the unit, and he doesn't have great uh, skills, I believe, for this. What's his war? Yeah, 69. So maybe we won't do that. We'll send out, say, Huang Gai with the unit. Yeah, so our stats will be a little bit better here. And so Pikes, we'll send that out as well. And we'll worry about sending the Siege Tower out in a few turns. Um, the reason I sent all three kinds is because we have armaments of all three kinds and combat in the game works on kind of a rock paper scissors uh sort of style i suppose you could say i'll talk a bit more about it once we start getting our units close to each other um so we've got 49 action points let's go ahead and recruit once just to build our numbers up from someone that we've sent out do some inspections and then advance the turn All right, let's see. Jiling's going to finish completing the archer turret. We'll see next turn if he's going to bother moving against us. Oh, well, that was unexpected. Okay. So Jiling looks like he's heading back to the city. Yuan Shu is mobilized with 10,000 troops in a spear unit uh, with an A aptitude. And Yan Shan decided to finish the... Archer turret. Okay, so we'll send Sun Tzu up as far as we can. Pikes right behind. Our bows. Alright. Because everything's developed, we can really just push these turns out pretty quickly here until we start getting into real combat. Okay, so we're seeing a bunch of stuff happening on the map here. I'm just going to have a quick look around and see what's going on. Got units, 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 units. Okay, so it looks like Cao Cao is at war with Kong Zhu over here. Yeah, Kong Zhu usually gets swallowed pretty quickly by Cao Cao. Cao Cao eventually founds the Kingdom of Wei in the book and uh, in history. He's got some phenomenal generals. Uh, this guy here, Xu Huang, is a general that has quickly become one of my favorites, especially in this X series. He got a huge boost. He had almost a nothing skill before. I believe it was uh, Indomitable. It made him immune to Misinform, I believe, or maybe Perturb. It was such a narrow skill, but now he actually has Divine Spears. He's the only guy in the game with it. He automatically crits on Spear Tactics, and Spears are awesome for confusing units. And then Yuejin here, normally I think has a low 80s war, and they've boosted him to give him something like a 92, I believe, to start. I think the last playthrough I had with him, he was up to a 98 war, so they've really boosted those generals. Kong Zhu is going to get killed pretty fast and lose Runan. And it looks like Lu Bu has attacked Tao Tian, which normally happens, and Lu Bu is just going to roll over this here. Lu Bu's got some awesome generals. Uh, he himself has 100 war and has one of the best skills in the game for combat. And he's got Zhang Liao, who is uh, also another awesome general, who has majesty and is really good with cavalry. He's got Gao Shun here as well. So he's just going to roll over that. I don't know if there's a whole lot else going on. Liu Bei is fighting against uh, Deng Ai. He will definitely beat them. Yeah, he's got Zhao Yun and Zhang Fei in the field. These are two of the best generals in the game. And then we've got Dong Zhuo in Andeng fighting against Ma Teng. And I think what normally happens is Dong Zhuo usually takes them out. 
and then Ma Chao <laughs> ends up wandering the map. He's another one of the best generals in the game. He usually ends up wandering around. I have a hard time getting a hold of him for some reason, no matter what force I play, but... Okay, so here we go. I think we're in range. Yeah, we're in range here, so what we want to do is he's got spears, I've got spears. This normally... We're going to move up here and use our pike unit first to attack him with a tactic. Now the rock, paper, scissors I was talking about is a system where spears trump cavalry. They do well against cavalry. Cavalry does well against pikes and pikes do well against spears. So you want to be using the proper unit type to attack. Bows are kind of removed from that. They're neither good or bad against any particular uh, of those three units. But they're a ranged unit. They're not so good at attacking uh, adjacent units. But So we're going to go in here and attack, uh, attack with a rake attack, which will pull his unit back one. And uh, what uh, what unit is this? Huang guy. And we've got a pipe general, Ling Tong. So we're actually... <laughs> we're going to see a crit portrait here, I think. And... This is one of the extra crit portraits that was added uh, through a mod that I downloaded. Someone has added portraits for Huang Gai and uh, Ling Tong. So normally this would just be a generic portrait, but we're going to see someone's altered art on this here. So we're going to go ahead and do a rake attack and pull it towards us. And do some pretty good damage. Yeah, 1300 damage for 100 some odd casualties. And then we're going to move our bow unit here and incinerate this unit and hit him with fire arrows and do some good damage because Shoyu has divine fire so he did as much damage with the fire attack as he normally would with his bow attack and then we've got Sunsa. I don't yeah there's still enough troops that we're gonna bother to attack with a tactic here so we're gonna go ahead and thrust which normally moves the unit back one square but there's nowhere to go so he's gonna stay in the fire and he'll start his next turn there and maybe take some damage. So 1400, so this unit is already down to 487 troops, it's going to be mopped up fairly quickly. And we're going to make short work of Yuan Shu as well. I use the thrust tactic, uh, if we use Rush with Sun Tzu, he's just going to confuse a unit and it's going to stay still and it's not even going to get a chance to attack. So this 10,000 strong unit of spears isn't going to do anything. So we're really not too worried about that. Let's go ahead and recruit again. And inspect. And drill the troops. And then next turn we're going to start outfitting again because we've used most of our armaments to put guys out in the field. As well, our food's not too bad, so... A lot of stuff happening. 